Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So when it comes to the electrophilic aromatic substitution, we are going to take the hydrogen from our molecule and we are going to replace it with some sort of an electrophile. Now, on contrary, when it comes to the nucleophilic aromatic substitution, we gotta have an aromatic molecule with some sort of a leaving group. And typically that leaving group is going to be some sort of a halide like fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. And yes, we are going to be using fluorine here as a living group, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, we are going to take this molecule and we are going to treat it with some sort of a nucleophile and as a result we are going to replace that leaving group with whatever nucleophile we are dealing with. And of course, to make it even more fun, there are two possible mechanisms for the nucleophilic aromatic substitution. One is going to be the addition elimination reaction, while the other one is going to be the elimination addition. Not very creative, I know. And in this video we are are going to focus on the addition elimination mechanism, which is going to be the main mechanism that you are going to be seeing within the scope of your course, although we'll talk about the other one as well. So let's talk about the mechanism of the nucleophilic substitution. I'm going to take this aromatic compound that I have over here with the nitro group and chlorine uh, that are sitting paired to each other. And I'm going to treat this molecule with potassium methoxide. Doing the preliminary analysis of my molecule, I can see that chlorine in this case is going to be our typical living group, so probably I'm going to be replacing this chlorine over here. And of course, the methoxide here is going to be my nucleophile. So at the very beginning, the reaction starts by taking our nucleophile and doing the nucleophilic attack like so, giving me the following negatively charged intermediate. Just like what we saw in the electrophilic aromatic substitutions, here resonance is going to play a huge role. So I can draw multiple resonance structures here, starting by taking my electrons and moving them around the ring like this, giving me the following structure. Then from this point, I can take them and move them one more time, giving me the following intermediate. And then finally, from this point, I will also remember that the nitro group is not just a bunch of random atoms, but it does have a structure which is very much relevant for the resonance. So I can draw another resonance structure involving my nitro group, which is going to look like this. And in this case, I want to point out something very important. Because my negative charges are on the oxygen in this last structure, that last structure is going to be a major resonance contributor and it is going to be fairly important for our mechanism overall. So this part of the mechanism, that was our addition part of the addition elimination mechanism. Now we are going to move on to the elimination part in which we are going to be losing our leaving group. So since my resonance structures are a little bit messy, I am going to redraw my molecule over here. And now we can show the loss of the living group by showing how these electrons are going to kick back and displace this chlorine essentially out of our molecule, giving us the final product looking like this and Cl- just floating around minding its own business. We no longer care about that. Now, while this mechanism seems fairly straightforward and easy, there are a couple of extremely important points here that we need to talk about. First of all, the electron withdrawing group. The placement of the electron withdrawing group matters a lot. Let me redraw the first part of the mechanism here where I have all of those negatively charged resonance structures moving around and let's look at that nitro group. The nitro group here is serving a crucial and probably the most important role. It is there to stabilize the negative charge. Now, let's imagine a situation where my nitro group is incapable of stabilizing the negative charge. So let's compare the reaction that I have on top of the screen with the following reaction over here. Now in this case, my methoxide can still potentially attack the position where my living group is. So this attacks here, the electrons go down like that, and as a result of this nucleophilic attack, I'm going to get the following intermediate. 
Now, of course, this intermediate can show me a few resonance structures. I can take these electrons and move them around like so, giving me the following intermediate, and from this point I can move them around one more time, like this, giving me another resonance contributor. Now, the problem here is that I have exhausted all of my resonance contributors, any reasonable resonance contributors, and the issue is that it is not enough to effectively stabilize our negative charge. The nitro group was absolutely crucial for that, and now we don't have the nitro group stabilization. So, if we think about this reaction from the purely kinetic perspective, I can draw the reaction diagram, which going to look like this. Now, I have the activation energy for this uh, reaction for the meta position, and I have the activation energy for the ortho para position. Of course, the activation energies for the ortho para are not going to be exactly the same. I'm just combining ortho and para together for the simplicity's sake, so to speak. So, in this case, since the activation energy for the meta position is so much higher due to the fact that our intermediate is not well resonance stabilized, that means that that reaction is going to be significantly slower. Not impossible, but too slow for any practical applications. So, remember, when it comes to the placement of your leaving group and your electron withdrawing group, those guys must be orthopera to each other. And I will remind you here real quick that the typical electron withdrawing groups are your meta directors that you know and love from the electrophilic aromatic substitutions, things like NO2, nitriles, carbonyls, etc. Anything that pulls the electron density towards itself. Now, in addition to the electron withdrawing group and the proper placement of the electron withdrawing group in the molecule, the nature of our leaving group matters as well. So, normally, when we are thinking about the uh, leaving groups and we are ranking our leaving groups, usually we think that iodine is the best leaving group, then we have bromine, chlorine, and fluorine is such a horrible leaving group that, generally speaking, we say that fluorine is not even a viable living group to begin with. However, when it comes to the nucleophilic aromatic substitution, the trick here to keep in mind is that the uh, rate determining step or the rate limiting step, if you like, in the nucleophilic substitution is the nucleophilic attack itself. So, if I look at my molecule where X is my living group, the nucleophile is going to be attacking at this position where we are developing a partial positive charge due to the polarization, uh, due to this axe that is sitting there. And here's the thing, the higher the delta plus, the better and the easier that attack is going to be. And of course, that polarization, that delta plus, is going to scale with the electronegativity. So, let's pull up our periodic table and check out our electronegativities. For the iodine, the electronegativity is about 266. For bromine, well, it's already bigger, it's, it's 296. For chlorine, it's even bigger, it's 316. And finally, for fluorine, it's almost 4 out of 4. So, when it comes to our living groups, the fluoride, or fluorine here, however you want to think about that, going to create the highest delta plus on the carbon, which means for the purposes of the nucleophilic aromatic substitution, the fluorine is the best living group. And in this case, instead of thinking about our living groups from the perspective of the living group ability, we should be thinking about those from the perspective of the reactivity towards the nucleophile. A strongly electron withdrawing fluorine is going to make the carbon to which it is attached very electrophilic, making reaction with nucleophile very favorable. So, this way, whenever you are thinking about the regioselectivity of the nucleophilic aromatic substitution in general, the very first thing that we are going to check is going to be the position of our leaving group and our electron withdrawing group. The electron withdrawing group and the leaving group, those guys must be orthopera to each other. Then, if we're still in doubt which living group to choose, we are going to go with the fluorine, then chlorine, then bromine, and finally, if we have no other choices, 
that's going to be iodine. Now, with all that theory in mind, let's look at some practice questions. Here is my example number one, and I'm always going to be doing the similar preliminary analysis. So first, I'm going to see that I have a carbonyl in my molecule, which is my typical electron withdrawing group. I also have a couple of chlorines, those guys can be my leaving groups, and I can see that one of the chlorines is orta to my electron withdrawing group, while the other one is meta, which means that one chlorine, the one that is orta, is going to be useful for us, and the other one is not going to be useful. And obviously the nucleophile in this case is going to be our sulfur-containing species. So to draw this mechanism here, I'm going to redraw the molecule, and the very first thing that's going to happen here, our sulfur is going to attack atom with a chlorine, moving electrons into the ring. That going to give me the following intermediate, and then from this point we can draw several resonance structures. The first resonance structure I will show by moving my electrons towards my pi bond like this, giving me the following resonance contributor. Then, from here, I'm going to take my electrons and move them one more time, giving me this contributor. And finally, from this point, I remember that I do have my carbonyl, so I'm going to move my electrons back, like so, and I will use my carbonyl for my last resonance contributor, which is going to look like this. And of course, like in the previous case, the major resonance contributor here is going to be this guy, which has the negative charge on the oxygen, stabilizing that negative charge. Now, from this point, we can move on to our elimination step, so I'm going to redraw my molecule, and I'm going to show that these electrons are going to come in and kick my chlorine out, giving me the final product looking like this. So far, so good. Okay, let's Let's move on to the next example then. Now, in this example, I am noticing right away that I have two nitro groups, two electron withdrawing groups. Generally speaking, for the purposes of the nucleophilic aromatic substitution, the more electron withdrawing groups you have and the stronger they are, the better. Then we have fluorine as our only leaving group, and the nucleophile in this case is going to be our oxygen-containing species, our alkoxide here. So what I'm going to do, like last time, I'm going to redraw my molecule over here, and um, let's also redraw our nucleophile like that, so I don't have, you know, very long awkward arrows. And then from this point, I'm going to show the nucleophilic attack over here, moving my electrons into the ring, giving me the following intermediate. Now, of course, I do have a whole bunch of resonance structures here involving both of my nitro groups, so make sure that you know how to draw those. For the sake of time, I am not going to be drawing them here, and I will move on to my next step, which is the elimination, kicking my leaving group out, so I'm going to show electrons coming back, kicking the fluoride out, giving me my final product looking like this. So here we didn't really have any choices for our leaving groups, and we had two electron withdrawing groups, which means that this reaction would just fly. This is probably as good of an example of a nucleophilic substitution as it gets for aromatic compounds. Now, here is one more example for you. In this molecule, I have this large aromatic compound and I have sodium hydride, but here is something interesting. I remember that sodium hydride or simple hydrides in general, they are very powerful bases, but they're not very nucleophilic, so what's going on here? Well, let's look at the rest of my molecule. I have my leaving group, which is chlorine, over here. I have the electron withdrawing group, which is conveniently in the orta position to my leaving group, so everything seems to be working in my favor, except for this base, which is not nucleophile. Well, let's see what we can do here. First, I'm going to start by redrawing my molecule here, and since hydride is a very powerful base, I can do the only thing that bases are good at is deprotonating things. So I'm going to deprotonate my oxygen over here, giving me the following intermediate, 
And look at that, I actually do have a nuclear file now. And since I know how much you guys love intramolecular processes, I just could not deny you a pleasure of a cyclization reaction. So what's going to happen here is the intramolecular reaction between our oxygen and our electrophilic carbon over here. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six membered rings. So my oxygen is going to come in here, attack this carbon number six, let's move our electrons into the ring like so, giving me the following cyclic intermediate. And my carbons are, well, my atom number one is oxygen, but then I have carbons two, three, four, five and six, and currently the negative charge is on the carbon number five, but we have a whole bunch of resonance structures here, one of which is going to be involving our nitrile over here, so for the practice sake, do make sure that you know how to draw them. I will move on to my elimination step like I did in the previous example by taking these electrons over here and kicking my chlorine out, giving me my final product looking like so. So was it easy peasy or was it awesome possum? You let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. In the next video, we are going to talk about the elimination addition mechanism. So make sure you boop the like button and subscribe so you don't miss it. And I'll see you next time.